Jim Simons. Dr. Simons. Dr. James Harris Simons. Complete outsider, mathematician, was a code breaker. Jim was a very unusual person who operated in a different sphere than I did. He's had at least three amazing careers. This great mathematician, great businessman, great philanthropist. He was always going on the move all the time, thinking, thinking, thinking. How the mind works, to how the universe began, to the fundamentals of mathematics. A pioneer of quantitative investing. He is one of the great men of our time. Smart, kind, generous, curious, creative, and loving. So successful that he became known as the Quant King. What if I told you that a mathematician with no Wall Street experience built the most successful hedge fund in history? And what if I told you that same man could turn $100 into over $2 million in just 30 years? And what if I told you he did it all using nothing but math, data, and a team of scientists who have never traded a stock in their lives? This is the story of Jim Simmons, the man they called the Quant King, the man who solved the market. Our story begins in 1938 in Newton, Massachusetts, where a young boy named James Harris Simmons was born with an unusual obsession. While other kids played with toys, Jim Simmons played with numbers. He would spend hours doubling numbers in his head, fascinated by the infinite patterns that emerged. When I was a little boy, I, uh, I liked math in the sense that I like to, when I was three or four or something, like to double the numbers to four, eight, 16, 32, etc. Et by age 20, he was already at MIT studying mathematics. And by 23, he had earned his PhD with UC Berkeley, writing a thesis on differential geometry that would later revolutionize physics. But before diving into academia, Simmons did something that revealed his adventurous spirit. He and a friend rode motor scooters from Boston all the way to Bogota, Colombia. When they needed a place to sleep, they would ask local police if they could spend the night in jail for safety. Surprisingly, the police often agreed. This wasn't just a young man's adventure. This was a glimpse into the mind that would later take calculated risks that would make him billions. After his PhD, Simmons briefly taught at MIT and Harvard, but then the Cold War came calling. And in the mid-1960s, Simmons joined the Institute for Defense Analysis in Princeton, New Jersey. His mission? Break the Soviet codes for the National Security Agency. While his colleagues focused purely on intelligence work, Simmons split his time, half code breaking for national security, half pursuing his own mathematical research. But then came 1967 and the Vietnam War was raging. Simmons did something that would change his life forever. He wrote a letter to the New York Times, publicly opposing the war. Then he told a Newsweek reporter he would stop working on Defense Department tasks until the war ended. Jim was one of the original code breakers. And at a certain point, um, he got very active in opposing the war in Vietnam and his relationship with the Institute for Defense Analysis was terminated because of his public opposition to the war. He was absolutely a patriot. And in 1968, he was fired. But this wasn't a setback. This was destiny calling. And I told him that, I said, I'm doing mostly mathematics now. And when the war is over, then I'll do mostly their stuff. Then I did the only intelligent thing I'd done that day. I uh, told my local boss, that I gave that interview. And he said, what did you say? And I told him what I said. And then uh, he said, I got to call Taylor. He called Taylor. That took 10 minutes. I was fired five minutes after that. And immediately after his dismissal, Simmons received an offer that would define the next chapter of his life. Head of the mathematics department at Stony Brook University. At Stony Brook, Simmons didn't teach mathematics. He revolutionized it. I was Jim's first student. He told me, don't waste too much time uh, reading literature. Read enough about a problem and then go off and think. Slowly, carefully. His collaboration with the legendary mathematician 
Xing Shen Chen, produced something extraordinary. And in 1974, they published a paper introducing what became known as the Chern Simmons invariance. Chern Simmons has become ubiquitous in, in physics of various sorts. At this time, we had no idea that that would be the case. I didn't even know any physics. They had no idea at the time, but their work would become fundamental to quantum field theory, string theory, and condensed matter physics. In 1976, Simmons won the American Mathematical Society's Oswald Veblen Prize in Geometry. He was at the peak of academic success, but Simmons had a secret. While teaching differential geometry by day, he was trading stocks and soybean futures by night. He was fascinated by patterns, not just in curved spaces and manifolds, but in market movements and price fluctuations. And in 1978, at age 40, this mathematics professor made a decision that would change Wall Street forever. In 1978, Jim Simmons walked away from his tenured position at Stony Brook and rented space in a strip mall just minutes from the university. He called his new company Monometrics. Later, he would rename it to Renaissance Technologies. While Wall Street was dominated by gut instinct, insider information, and old boy networks, Simmons had a radically different idea. What if you could use mathematics to predict market movements? What if you could remove human emotion entirely from trading? The early years were brutal. Simmons tried various approaches from fundamental analysis to technical indicators. Nothing worked consistently. I could see that this was a very gut-wrenching business. You know, you come in one morning, you think you're a genius, the markets are for you. We were trading currencies and commodities and financial instruments and so on, not stocks, but those kinds of things. And the next morning you come and you feel like a jerk, the market's against you. It was very gut-wrenching. But then Simmons made a decision that seemed insane to everybody on Wall Street. Instead of hiring traders, he hired mathematicians. Instead of recruiting from business schools, he recruited from physics departments. Cryptographers who worked on breaking codes, physicists who studied particle interactions, computer scientists who understood pattern recognition. The real secret sauce is that we start with great scientists, first-class people who've done first-class work. He said, you're either on board or you're not. So I said, okay, I'm on board. Jim always picked the teams where the scientists bounced ideas off each other, like good jazz musicians. And Jim loved jazz, and he loved the interplay of ideas and those conversations. That collaborations that work that way would be more effective. And he would meet regularly with everyone, but he did not micromanage at all. Simmons created something unprecedented, a flat organizational structure where brilliant minds work together, not in competition, but in collaboration. My idea of leadership of an organization is to hire the very best people you possibly can. And I have a good taste in people. And in 1988, after a decade of trial and error, Simmons launched what would become the most successful investment fund in history, the Medallion Fund. What happened next defied everything Wall Street thought it knew about investing. From 1988 to 2018, the Medallion Fund averaged 66% annual returns before fees. After fees, it still averaged over 39% per year. To put this into perspective, the S&P 500 averaged about 10% during the same period. A successful moneymaker in modern finance, Jim Simons. Jim Simons' medallion fund has done 39% net of fees for three decades, which proves that it works. That is correct. 66% per year. Single most successful hedge fund in the history of the industry. $100 invested into the medallion in 1988 would have grown to over 2.1% million dollars by 2018. The performance didn't just beat the market, it beat Warren Buffett, 
It beat Peter Lynch. It beat every other investor in history. But they were very, very smart. Yes, they got very rich. Very, very, very smart. And very smart and very rich, yeah. And, 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 and very high grade, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Jim Simons. And in 2008, when the financial world collapsed and the S&P fell over 38%, Medallion gained 83%. And in 2000, during the dot-com crash when the S&P 500 lost 10%, Medallion gained 98%. And from 1988 to 2018, Medallion never had a single losing year. But here's what made it even more remarkable. In 1993, Simmons closed the fund to outside investors. Only Renaissance employees could invest. This wasn't just a hedge fund. This was the most exclusive investment club in the world. So how did they do it? How did a group of mathematicians with no Wall Street experience create the greatest money-making machine in history? The answer lay in something Wall Street had never seen before. Big data. Before big data was even a term. While other funds analyze companies and economic trends, Renaissance analyzed everything stock prices, bond yields, currency movements, commodity prices, weather patterns, and even satellite data. But here's what made them different. Their algorithms didn't try to understand why markets moved. They simply identified patterns in how they moved. For example, they might discover that when the Japanese yen weakened by a certain amount on Tuesday morning, there was a 52% chance that German bonds would rise by Thursday afternoon. They didn't need to know why, they just needed to know it worked. Most of their trades lasted just days or weeks. They weren't betting on the long-term success of companies, they were betting on mathematical probabilities. And while a traditional fund might make dozens of trades per year, Medallion made thousands. And here is the crucial part. They used massive leverage to amplify their returns. But unlike other funds that used leverage recklessly, Renaissance combined it with extreme diversification. Each individual trade had a tiny edge. But when you make thousands of trades, even with a small mathematical advantage, those tiny edges compound into extraordinary returns. The most important thing we did is have an open atmosphere, Simmons once said. Unlike the competitive, secretive culture of Wall Street, Renaissance fostered collaboration. Scientists shared ideas freely, knowing that everyone's success depended on the collective intelligence of the group. But behind the extraordinary success lay profound personal tragedy that would reshape Simmons' priorities forever. In 1977, Simmons married Marilyn Horries, an economist who shared his love of science and learning. Together they had two children, Nicholas and Audrey. I fell in love with Jim the first day I met him. I remember thinking, why am I acting so silly all the time? And I said, I think I love you. It only took two days. Talk about love at first sight. That's what it was. It was love at first sight. It was the beginning of a wonderful relationship. Simmons also had three children from his first marriage, Elizabeth, Nathaniel, and Paul. In 1996, unfortunately, tragedy struck. Paul Simmons, aged 34, was killed in a bicycle accident on Long Island, hit by a car. Seven years later, in 2003, another devastating blow. Nicholas Simmons, aged 24, drowned whilst free diving in Bali, Indonesia. These losses profoundly affected Simmons. The man who had solved the markets couldn't solve the randomness of life's cruelest moments. But from this pain came purpose. The tragedies motivated Simmons and Marilyn to focus their wealth on scientific research, particularly autism research through the Simmons Foundation. As he started to earn money, I suggested to Jim one day that we just start a foundation. I just had a cardboard file box in my closet and I did the accounting myself. It was a learning curve, a steep learning curve. They understood that while mathematics could predict market patterns, 
The mysteries of the human brain required a different kind of investigation. In 1994, Jim and Marilyn Simmons founded the Simmons Foundation. What started as a modest charitable effort would become one of the most influential scientific foundations in the world. Their first major initiative was the Simmons Foundation Autism Research Initiative, also known as SFARI. The personal tragedy of losing two children drove them to understand the mysteries of the developing brain. Lean back in my chair and I close my eyes and I'm just thinking, thinking about mathematics or thinking about something else. What is going on in my brain? What is actually going on in my brain? I want to know how the brain thinks. That was frequently his refrain. About how the brain works. Germination of a thought or creative idea. Understand how a thought happened. Study the brain and understand the brain. Further our understanding of how the brain works. But their philanthropy extended far beyond autism research. Mathematics, physics, biology, neuroscience, theoretical computer science. The foundation grantees have gone on to win Nobel Prizes, Fields, Medals and other top scientific honours. And in 2023, the Simmons made the largest unrestricted gift to an American university in history, $500 million to Stony Brook University, where Jim's academic career had flourished decades earlier. Through their foundation, the Simmons have funded discoveries that have advanced human knowledge in ways that may not be fully understood for generations. The remarkable thing about basic science, Simmons wrote, is that one never knows where it may lead. Sometimes basic science seems to go nowhere, but more often it goes down a path leading to more discoveries and more discoveries and more discoveries. While Simmons was building his fortune and funding scientific research, his approach to investing was quietly revolutionizing Wall Street. In the 1980s, when Simmons started Renaissance, quantitative trading was viewed with skepticism. Today, it dominates the markets. High frequency trading, algorithmic strategies, machine learning models, all of these trace their roots back to the work Simmons pioneered. Today, an astonishing more than 60% of all stock trading is done by algorithms. The human traders who once dominated Wall Street have largely been replaced by the mathematical models Simmons pioneered. Simmons didn't just build a successful hedge fund, he transformed an entire industry. And in 2010, at age 72, Jim Simmons stepped down as CEO of Renaissance Technology, but he didn't step away from his life's work. He became more involved in the Simmons Foundation, expanding its reach and ambition. He established Simmons Collaborations, bringing together scientists from different disciplines to tackle fundamental questions about the universe. He founded the Flatiron Institute, dedicated to advancing scientific research through computational methods. On the 10th of May 2024, Jim Simmons passed away at his home in Manhattan. He was 86 years old. The financial world mourned the loss of its most successful practitioner. At the time of his death, Simmons was worth an estimated $31.4 billion, but his true legacy wasn't measured in dollars. What is it like to be a billionaire? What is it like to be a billionaire? <laughs> I think it's especially nice to be able to help other people. Jim Simmons proved that mathematics could unlock secrets hidden in the chaos of the financial markets. He proved that intellectual curiosity, properly channeled, could generate not just wealth, but knowledge that benefits all of humanity. The Medallion Fund continues to operate, still closed to outside investors, and still generating extraordinary returns for Renaissance employees. The Simmons Foundation continues to fund breakthrough research, carrying forward his belief that basic science leads to discoveries we can't yet imagine and across Wall Street in trading floors dominated by algorithms and mathematical models, his influence lives on. In a world often driven by emotion, instinct and speculation, Jim Simmons proved the power of logic, data and mathematical truth. He was and always will be remembered as the Quant King, the man who solved the market. If you've enjoyed this video, then do check out our algorithms in the description. We have so many different tools that are mastering the markets from fusion to beast mode. 
If you've enjoyed this extraordinary documentary about Jim Simmons, make sure we hit that like and hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next fascinating documentary.